me heaven sighs And though I close my eyes I see love be yours When you press me to your heart I'm in a world apart A world where roses bloom And when you speak Angels sing from above heading for a bike ride. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is a glorious day. It's beautiful, yeah. Well, where are you going to go? Uh, oh, just somewhere around here. There's lots of bike trails. It's really nice. There's plenty of roads that go through the vineyards and everywhere else. So I'll probably go on the other side of the river. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, have a wonderful ride. Thank you. Although I have to say, I'm not so sure how I feel about a man wearing this much lycra. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps me go faster. <laughs> okay, that's what they all say. <laughs> Happy trails. This is the sky today. Isn't it unbelievable? And we're getting out of the house. And our shy daughter is joining us. What could be more glorious? So today we are going to go wine tasting just a few short steps from our home. The Janier Vineyards are in the hills just above the chateau. We're nestled just at the foot of the vineyards and we're visiting our neighbor to buy some wine. We are incredibly lucky to be surrounded by vineyards, but even a trip to our smallest local supermarket provides us with unimaginable choices for wine. And as it's France, as you can see, really, really inexpensive wines as well. There are choices of everything, absolutely everything that one could possibly imagine. Bordeaux's and Burgundy's, as little as three and four euros each. Um, a walk down the wine aisle is, look at all of these wonderful, wonderful wines. And as you can see, compared to many other countries, it's, uh, it's astonishing the difference in price. Janier is quite a highly sought after wine. So this is an added benefit of living just next to the Janier Vidyards. If you've never heard of Janier wine, you wouldn't be the first. We had been here for 20 years and had never heard of it until we moved here. And many of our French friends were exactly the same. However, this wine was developed by Cistercian monks in the Middle Ages, was celebrated by Henry IV, and carefully mapped under Louis XIV. And the Janier wine growing area has been experiencing a revival since the 1970s both in terms of quality and through a new surge of interest from the public. 
It only covers 65 hectares, or 160 acres, here in France, and is well known for its white wine, which is predominantly of the Chenin Blanc grape. It also has a red wine varietal, which features the Pinot Doni and the Cabernet Franc grapes, so very unusual in flavor. And the reason it grows so well here is because of the Tufo sedimentary limestone, which is 90 million years old from the Turonian age. We're going to be visiting the Domaine de Cézanne, which is from the family de Frénaud, and they have been making wines since 1925. Even though most places in France are still closed due to the pandemic, shops are allowed to be open, and so Xavier Frenot has graciously welcomed us, his neighbors, into his shop, which is attached to his caves and his vineyard for some lovely tasting and exploring of the various offerings that he has, as well as learning a little bit more about the Janier wine. Quite the wine expert for a 19 year old. <laughs> that sounds very inspiring. You. You're raised in France <laughs> and by me. Okay, that's a winner. I think we're going to have to take some of that as well. What do you think? I agree. Because I adore champagne, our local vineyard here also makes a pétillante, which is made in the method traditionnel, like champagne. And so it is also delicious, and we're going to have to try and buy some of that today. Real champagne. I think we definitely need a bottle of that. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> While Isabella and I were having an absolutely delightful time tasting the wines, tasting the various years, and discussing with Xavier about our various options for the purchases of the day, Simon was allowed to go back inside the caves where he got to see the old oak barrels, and the caves go on for miles and miles, just like many of the caves throughout France. It's incredible, the levels of humidity, the work and effort that went into creating these spaces, some of which were actually troglodyte dwellings, which are located all around where we live. It's absolutely fascinating. And so he went off exploring rooms and rooms, various corridors. It's easy to imagine getting completely lost back in there and then seeing where the bottles are kept, where the sparkling wines are turned, and ultimately where this incredible drink that's been being made on this very soil for a thousand years is created. What great fun. Finally, our curiosity got the best of us, and we came out to join him. Simon even found an old coin stuck in the wall. Look at the humidity. Incredible. Is it this coin? I 
I'm gonna get this, I love it so much. It comes in three different sizes, but I want the big one. It's a trivet. And it's got champagne corks and wine corks. I just love it. <laughs> we'll always be Good girl, that's it. Yes. So apparently we have been very remiss in not introducing you properly to our pets. Probably the most important members of our family. Certainly Pavlova thinks so. This is Pavlova. She is a Samoyed and she's our third Samoyed. We've had Samoyeds now for 25 years and they're very, very sweet and kind and happy, happy dogs. <laughs> Hello, Pavlova. Yes, you are. You're just gorgeous. Let's have a little quiz. Leave your comments down below. Did we name Pavlova after the famous white fluffy meringue dessert, arguably created in either Australia or New Zealand? After Pavlov, the Russian scientist who used dogs in his conditioning experiments, or after Anna Pavlova, the famous Russian ballerina? We'd love to hear what you think. Pavlova is nine years old and she is very much enjoying the vineyards. We take her for walks up in the Janier vineyards that we just showed you almost every single day. And she also has good friends who are ponies. The ponies got their pedicures last week. Their names are Centennial and Ouragon. And last week we had lots of snow and frost, but it was still very exciting. And we will show you all about that in just a minute. All of our animals are rescues, including Pavlova, who was adopted at the age of one and a half from the Samoyed Rescue Society in England. Many people purchase these beautiful thoroughbred dogs because they are lovely to look at and have beautiful temperaments. However, they are still larger dogs that need lots of space and exercise. Meaning, sadly, they're given away. You're very ladylike. Come on then. Come on then. Come on. Come on. cheese of the week. Our featured cheese this week is called a coeur centré or an ashed heart which is a type of goat's cheese. We bought it just today at the beautiful cheese shop in the covered market of our nearest city of Tours from the cheese shop called Rudolf Le Meunier. It is absolutely gorgeous and we'll show you more of that in our next episode. Today's cheese Goat's cheese is believed to date back to the Roman times, although the process of ashing cheese, which gives it this slightly delicate, ashy looking rind, is believed to have begun right here where we live in the Loire Valley, where it is thought that the pruned grapevines for making the wine would then be burned and put around the fresh cheese to protect it from bugs and vermin until the cheese has time to form the penicillium that's needed to protect it and form a rind so that the cheese can age properly. We're serving it today with a lovely paste of raspberry and rosemary. And we are very much looking forward to trying this lovely, lovely cheese. So as with many things in France, there are certain rules of etiquette about how the cheese is to be cut. If the cheese is in a round shape, it gets cut like a piece of pie into individual portions. If it is already in the shape of a wedge, then the shape of the wedge must always be preserved. The end must never be cut off. But I have absolutely no idea how to cut a heart 
shaped cheese. <laughs> Here we go. I think I'm going to try to preserve the heart shape after all. really good. I'm quite proud of myself because I've managed to preserve the heart shape even in the cutting process. Give your heart and soul to me and life will always be Hi, so here we are in Marson uh, Square and you can see behind me the beautiful church and the memorial to the soldiers that were uh, killed during the First World War. So that's a feature in many, many uh, French uh, squares. But more importantly, on a Thursday, it's pizza day. And as you can see, we have our own van who comes here and parks and makes this beautiful pizza from a wood-fired oven. Uh, and so for lunch at the moment, because there's a curfew at six, uh, but often he's here in the evening normally, uh, so for lunch we can get pizza, which is perfect. Uh, uh, Oh, merci! <laughs> it's the delicious pizza that we get uh, every Thursday here. Isn't that beautiful? Perfect. Ready to eat. Yum, yum. You may be wondering what on earth is she doing? And the answer is I'm sunbathing. It is the very beginning of March. Last week we had snow and it was freezing um, and but the sun has come out it's glorious outside but not that warm um, people often wonder why we bought this particular chateau France is full of the most beautiful properties that one could possibly imagine and it was a really difficult decision do we want to have more land less land we knew we wanted to downsize with the actual house itself um, but it's just so difficult to choose, you know, architecturally, time period, all of it. So when we saw this particular chateau, one of the things that really sealed the deal for us was that it had a marvelous, big indoor pool and spa. This is really unusual for a private house or even a chateau here in France and it meant that we could enjoy the sun and swimming and relaxing and hopefully treat our friends to all sorts of pampering when they come to visit. So I should get back to planting. We're gonna do a big transformation of this space. When we bought it, even though it was big and beautiful, it was kind of a big, white, very sterile anodyne box. And so we are trying to turn it into a lush, tropical paradise. And we will start that transformation today. I do need to get back to planting, but I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the sunshine a little bit longer. So I'm here at the garden center and I'm absolutely thrilled because we've just bought lots of plants for the pool area and it's going to be gorgeous. Lovely plants we got for the pool area. Aren't they beautiful? I can't wait till they're all in their boxes and their pots so, and looking lovely. So what's the plan? The plan is that we're going to plant all of these out into eight different window boxes uh -huh. and in several pots, large and small. Yeah. And then hopefully the pool area is going to be a tropical paradise. Ooh, because it's a bit plain at the moment, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah. And we need to make it a fun space to be in. We do. Yeah. And a beautiful space to be in as well. Yeah. And so these plants are going to be part of your grand design. They are indeed. 
Oh, well done. Well done. Well, I can't wait to see what you do with these. I can't wait to see either, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So talk us, what have you got here plant-wise? Okay. We've got some uh, succulents. Did you say too much talking? Yes. You're how, so how is that possible? How could I possibly be talking And then you're going to be like, you edited me too I'm much. I'm talking. Well, you do. You always edit out what I say. Because well, it's obviously you, not interesting. <laughs> it's obviously not interesting to anybody. Even you. Even if it's not interesting to my wife. I'm sure it's not interesting to anybody else. Whatever I have to say. You know. Just, just edit me out. I'm going to edit you right out. Yeah, edit me right out. Here we go. Yeah, lots of different colours. Of the shade of green. Now, there are... Some purples and stuff in here, tripping over our strawberry netting. I really like all the succulents. I think they're marvelous. Aren't they amazing? They are. The they're quality beautiful. of these are beautiful. I love these. I love just... these ones. They look like they look like roses. Yeah. What are they? Do you, you don't know what they're called? Echeveria. Do they're called what now? Echeveria. Echeveria. Because the label is literally right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought for a second you were being. I thought for a second you were being smart. But actually, I do know these you ones. Just, so the, you can these read. Are, these are cineraria. <laughs> Yeah, see, Cineraria. 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 Yes. Do you that's remember what that from where you bought them this morning, where they were labelled? Or if actually <laughs> you've probably got a label on them somewhere. <laughs> oh, yes, look, this is the uh, very famous. These look like aloe vera. Are these they aloe vera? They are aloe vera. And they look very young, which is why they're, I suppose, they're that green. Or is that the variety they are? I don't know. Because we've got some other aloe vera and it's really, really... Yeah, okay, those are more blue, like this, yeah, like blue. this kind Beautiful of colour, this kind of colour. So the green's really... Oh, look at the light. It's just crazy it's right now. It's beautiful. Is it hitting the tree? Look at that. Oh! Hey, Mignon! Hey, Mignon! Sit. Boom. That's it. Good, good. Be nice. Be nice. You're going to get a claw in the nose. Be nice. <laughs> Be friendly. This is Romo. Romo's actually the neighbor's cat. But he likes to come hang out with me here in the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You can do it. <laughs> you have to go home now, little thing. I can't lock you in the potager. It's time for you to go to your home. I think Romo is literally a cat stuck in a tree. You might have to call the fire brigade. And now, as promised, pony pedicures. And a huge thank you to all of you out there who have liked, commented, and subscribed to our new little YouTube channel. Friends, family, and new friends, we have had so much fun making these videos and it's really done wonders for helping us get through this long lockdown. We are looking forward to joining you for the next episode and if you didn't see the first two episodes that we already made, you can get to know us a little bit better by clicking on those links. See you soon. Whenever I think of you And darling, I think of you to me.